Hi, I'm Richard Duffy. I'm the SAP Business One Product Evangelist, and I'm part of the SAP Global Small and Mid-Size Enterprise team. On behalf of SAP and our partners, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join this live demonstration of SAP Business One. Every business has customers, uh, so therefore every business usually needs to invoice them. What I'm gonna do in this demonstration is I'm gonna take you through the invoicing process inside SAP Business One. We're gonna start by creating a, a quotation. We're gonna turn that quotation into a sales order, the sales order to a delivery, the delivery to an invoice, and then also we're gonna take that invoice and we're gonna create a credit note. Now the thing to remember is that you don't have to do every single one of those steps in the process. You can come in at the invoicing stage. You can start off at the delivery stage. It's totally up to you. But so that you've got a good overview of exactly how it works, I'm gonna show you each of those stages in sequence. But do remember, you can jump in at any point in time, just as a matter of the way your business works. Now I'm inside SAP Business One. I'm going to use my modules view. So this is the menu that I'm gonna use. In some of the other demonstrations, you've seen me use the cockpit. I'm gonna change it a little bit and I'm gonna start using the, uh, the main menu. So we go into our sales process and it's here under sales AR. Now, one of the things that you'll see is we've laid each of the steps out in a logical sequence. You can go sales quotation, sales order, like I said, or you can jump in at any point here. I'm gonna dive in at the sales quotation phase and I'm gonna leave that just in that size. First thing I need to do is I need to choose my customer. Now I can do that from the drop down list here or I am able to go in and do a search and I can do that search simply by putting in a wildcard and pressing enter and it'll give me a list of all the business partners I can choose from. And in this case, I'm going to choose Earthshaker Corporation. Again, that's the one we're going to use for most of the demonstrations. It's giving me uh, the ability now to specify who was the contact person at the customer that uh, put in the order. In this case, it's Bob McKensley. And he's going to give me a customer reference number. Well, maybe at this particular point in time, there is no reference number because all he's done is he's called me and said, I want a quote for some, uh, for some printers. So that's fine. So I'm going to leave that blank. I can go across here, I can specify the posting date. So a sales quotation itself doesn't create any accounting entries. When I turn the sales quotation into uh, an order or into a delivery, that's when it's gonna create those accounting transactions and that's where this posting date becomes valid. I can also put in a valid until date and I can also put in a document date so I can override those uh, if I have the rights to do that and my system is configured accordingly. So all those dates are fine. Now I wanna go and I wanna start choosing the products that I wanna include in the order. Again, same thing. If you know your product codes off the top of your head, you can just start typing them in. There's no need to do all the lookups or anything like that. Uh, if you've got a barcode scanner, for example, as well, attached to your computer, and you just wanna start scanning barcodes from a page or even off the items, if you're operating in a retail environment, you can certainly do that. I'm gonna do the lookup here. So Bob's rung me and he wants a proposal or he wants a quote for some IBM Info Print 1312s. So I just choose the product code. I put in the quantity that I want or that he wants the quote for, it's five. There's the unit price is $500. Is there a discount percentage? Well, there isn't at the moment, but that discount percentage can be overridden if they have the rights. Plus, it can also pick that up from the customer record for Earthshaker Corporation. In this case, I'm just leaving it as it stands. Tax code is automatically preset again based on the customer location, which state they're in and everything like that. And then you can see there is the uh, the extended line item price. Now, it's as simple as that. You wanna be very, very quick and easy with getting these uh, things into a quote. It's as simple as putting in the product code, putting in the quantity, and away you go. I can now choose add, and that's it, my quotation's done. But if you need to, you can start getting a little bit more sophisticated. So, I'm gonna go back to that quotation, there it is. I can call up one of those line items and at any point in time, I can right click on the line and you can now see I've got additional things that I can put in here. 
So for example, I'm able to see the gross profit. If I was selling that item for that price, there's my sale price, you can see what the gross profit is on that line. So you can see it as a dollar value as well as a percentage. And there's a number of different ways that it calculates the gross profit, which are set in your configuration. Right now, I'm basing my gross profit on the item cost. But I can, if I want to, I can base the gross profit. I can look at what the gross profit is by comparing to any one of these other price lists. Uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm not going to go through and explain each one of those in detail, but just understand that you have total flexibility about that. So for example, you can set up a price list that is the item cost if you're buying from a supplier, for example, for education, and you buy at a different price when you're buying for an education customer as com uh, compared to the price that you might buy at when you're just buying to bring into stock and then sell to normal customers. Or you might have a special contracted price that you buy from to fulfill a government contract. SAP Business One gives you the flexibility to manage that and then see all of your gross profit calculated correctly on the basis of that. So you can see, dive down and look at the gross profit information there. Other things I can do, I can look at my available to promise. So I'm able to pick that inventory item and it will show me line by line what um, is the amount of stock that I have and what is the amount that I have that I'm able to promise to this particular customer. So again, you've got total flexibility there and total control over uh, the information that's in the system. So if you know Bob says to you, okay, will you have those on such and such a date? You can go in and do that calculation and tell him, yep, we're gonna have those five, no problem at all. Or you could say to him, well, look, we've got a lot of orders sitting there in the system, so you really need to come back to me as soon as possible so I can turn this proposal or this quotation into an order uh, as quickly as possible to make sure we guarantee that you get that stock. So that's my sales quotation. Now, of course, you generate a sales quotation very, very quickly and easily. You can generate that quotation uh, into a printed document. So I'm just gonna let that run for a second. Now, what you're looking at here is an example of a document that we have built using Crystal Reports. Now, all the other, or a number of the other reports that I've shown you in SAP Business One, we're using, if you like, our quick and easy reporting tool called the Print Layout Designer. But for those documents that you want to be a little bit more graphically rich, a little bit more presentation ready, this is where the Crystal Reports layout tool becomes very, very helpful because it has a lot more flexibility and capability around really dressing up your marketing documents. Not only that, but you'll also notice on my Crystal Report, when I generated it, I've got my golden arrows. So when I've got the report on screen, I'm able to click and drill down from inside the report to the underlying information as well. But there it is, there's our sales quotation. So I'm able to now go and I can print that out, I can fax it to Bob, I can send it via email, I've got total flexibility over how that works. So Bob's received the quotation and he comes back to me and he says, well I really like that quotation, it's all good, I wanna go ahead and I wanna turn that into an order. With SAP Business One, we've made that really simple. All I need to do is call up the sales quotation and I choose copy to. So now it's saying, all right, what do you wanna copy it to? Do you wanna take this quotation and turn it into an order? Do you wanna turn it into a delivery? Do you wanna go straight to the accounts receivable invoice? Wholly and solely up to you how you do it. I'm gonna go through each step. So I'm gonna turn this into a sales order. So there it is, you now see the sales quotation's been turned into a sales order. So the next thing I need to do now is to put in the delivery date. I'm gonna say I want that delivered on the 2nd of next month. So I'll put that delivery date in there. And it's now it's asking me, do I wanna update the existing table rows with the new delivery date? Why is it asking me that? I'm gonna say yes, but it's asking me that because each row 
in the order can have a separate delivery date. I've got all those lines there in the order. Again, I can right click and you can see there's a whole range of additional um, things that I can do on each one of those lines. Now one of the other things I can do as well is you'll see that this is a fairly short looking, um, for want of a better term, grid that only shows certain information. There is a lot more information sitting underneath there that you can access if you need to. All you need to do if you want to access that information is you press Control L and it brings up the row detail against the order. So now I've got all this other information. I'm not going to show you and explain to you what every single one of these fields does, but we've got all kinds of different information. For example, for your inventory, you can record not only your code for a product, but your customer, they might have a particular code that they use when they refer to it. So you can do the order entry of your code or their code. You can put in uh, a bu different barcode number. So you have might have a, a part number which is in the barcode versus what you have as the item number. You can use different factors for doing calculations of pack sizes. Um, you can change your commission percentages. You can override the, the, the weights of the product for shipping. You can specify a different number of packages, again, for shipping. There's a whole range of things that you can do there that give you total flexibility. You can even specify, because Business One handles multiple warehouses, you can even specify which warehouse you want the stock to come from. And when you're on the warehouse field, by pressing Control Tab, you can drill down and see in each one of your warehouses how many you have available, how many in stock, how many committed, and so on. So there is a lot of information that you can get to underneath that particular screen. Now if you're looking at it and you're saying, well gee, that's nice, but I'd really like to have additional information on this screen. For example, I'd like to include the warehouse field on this screen. Not a problem. All you need to do is go onto Tools and choose Form Settings. This brings up the form settings for this particular screen. And then I want to look at my row format. And you'll now see all of those fields that I can include. I can specify which ones are in the row format, which is that big expanded field or that expanded view I just showed you. Or this view that we're now looking at is called our table format. So if I want to include it on this view, I simply go in here and I can say I want to see the warehouse. So I want to make that visible. Now if I don't want people to override a field, all I do is I just toggle this active on and off. In this case, I do want them to be able to override that field. And then what I want is I want the warehouse field to appear before the unit price. So all I do is click and drag that up and drop it in here before the unit price, I say OK, and now you'll see the warehouse field is now on that screen before the unit price. So of course, I can press Control Tab there and now view all of the information by warehouse. So that's my sales order, it's now complete. The next thing I need to do is I need to go and I need to choose Update, because that's now going to commit that sales order. So that sales order is now committed. By the way, SAP Business One also gives you the ability to track serial numbers and batch numbers. So if I had to, I could do my serial number and batch number allocation at that particular point in time. Right now, I'm not tracking serial numbers on that item, but if I was, it would pop up and give me the ability to choose my serial numbers at that time. So my sales order is committed. Once again, I now have the ability, if I want to, to print an underlying document. For example, a sales order confirmation. And you can see, here's our sales order confirmation. And I can send that out via fax. I can print it and mail it, whatever the case may be. I can even, utilizing some other functionality in SAP Business One, I can take that information 
format that as an XML document and have that XML document automatically sent out via EDI or whatever the case may be. So there's a number of different ways you can handle that. So there's my sales order confirmation. Next step I need to go through is I need to send that out for a delivery. So I go and I choose delivery. So it's now creating the delivery docket for me. I'll say add. Now, once I have created the delivery, it's telling me you cannot change this document after you've added it. Why? This is where the accounting transactions get committed. SAP Business One does not allow you to go in and change uh, accounting transactions without some kind of audit trail. So that's what we're telling you here. Right now you're committing this document. The only way of then changing it is to go back through and process a return or a credit note or whatever the case may be. But that's okay, because most businesses, that's the way they want things done. So I'll say yes to continue. And that's now created my delivery. That document can now be printed out. I can send that to a printer in the warehouse. The other thing that we actually have inside SAP Business One is what we call print sequences. So what this enables me to do is it enables me to set up that I want different documents to be produced in sequence and have those documents go to different, uh, different printers. So for example, I could say, look, I wanna print one copy of this document to this printer, another copy of the document to this printer, and then I want to print a uh, for example, maybe a delivery summary to a different printer and the print sequences allows us to do that. But that's it, I've got my delivery done. You can now see that the status is showing me as well that this delivery docket has been printed. Next step, assuming everything's okay, I can either go ahead and produce my invoice or perhaps the customer has decided they're gonna send it back before I've done the invoice. Then I can process a return. But you'll see these things only come up when it's appropriate or when it's available. So it's context sensitive. If you had not yet gone to the delivery phase, then you couldn't create a return. Again, just making sure that we don't confuse your, your people with too many options where those options aren't actually appropriate at that point in time. So I'm gonna copy this to an accounts receivable invoice there it is, there's my information, that's all done. And you can see based on sales quotation 248, which was then turned into sales order 246, which was then turned into delivery number 246. And it's just a coincidence that those numbers are so close. And then once I've got that, all I need to do is say add, once again, accounting transactions going to appear here. Uh, and I can say yes. now. Um, by the way, one of the new features that's in SAP Business One version 8.81 is the ability to do what's called a journal entry preview. I'm looking at this and I might be thinking, wow, okay, what's gonna happen in the general ledger when I process this? All I need to do is right click here and say journal entry preview. And now it's showing me what are the transactions that are gonna go through in the system. So we're gonna debit the account of Earthshaker Corporation, and that's also gonna debit my accounts uh, receivable. My sales tax accounts are all gonna be credited, and my sales revenue account is also gonna be credited. Okay, so I can see that information before I process the transaction. That was something which many of our customers asked for us to include in the software, and that's how that got in there. Now, by the way, once you become an SAP Business One customer, each year you'll be paying an annual maintenance fee. Anytime we include that new functionality, you automatically get that as part of your annual maintenance. So I'm now gonna go in and I'm gonna say add. You cannot change the document after I've put it in, and that's fine. So that is my entire process completed. Started with a sales uh, quotation, turned it into an order, turn the order into a delivery, turn the delivery into an invoice. But I could go from quote to invoice. I could go from, I can start at a delivery and go to invoice. I can start at any point in that cycle. It's wholly and solely up to how you choose to run your business. Now, a couple of other things to bear in mind. You can process these documents en masse. What do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. Let's just dive out of here. 
and once I go back into my accounts receivable module, you'll see we have this uh, uh, function called the document generation wizard. And what the document generation wizard allows you to do is it allows you to perform batch processing of those documents. I'll give you an example. You can um, create a parameter set, and this is just a, a, a way of saving all the different options that it's going to require in order to run the document generation, just to make it quick and easy for you. So I'm going to call this, this is my default sales order generation. Um, I'll call it default sales order gen. And description, use this to generate sales orders. And I'll say next, and then it's gonna ask me, okay, what is my target document? So my target document is sales orders, and then it's gonna ask me how I want to treat each one of these uh, target documents. When I'm doing my summaries, do I want to produce a, uh, a summary method? So if I'm adding multiple documents, for example, I can create, take five um, quotations and have those consolidate down into one sales order. So if I've got five quotes for Earthshaker and they decide to go ahead with all of those, I can consolidate those down to one sales order. Or I can keep them separate, totally up to you. And you can have different sets of parameters to control exactly how that works. Again, chances are you're probably not gonna remember all these different options that I've given you, but the key to remember is flexibility. Flexibility to map to your business process. So, uh, no summary, I don't want to do that. Now, exchange rates, SAP Business One is full multi-currency. I can get it to utilize the exchange rate that was active at the time I put in the source document, or I can tell it that I want to update that and use the exchange rate today. Again, totally up to you. If I want to use the exchange rate that was on the original document, then all I do here is I change this, this parameter. Then I'll say next. What kind of documents do I want? Well, it knows because I'm producing sales orders, it knows that the only documents that can come from is sales quotations. So I can put some parameters there. I could even expand some of those parameters and choose all of these other different options. Um, and then I can specify how I sort that. I'll say next. How do I want them consolidated? Do I want them consolidated by shipping address, consolidated by payment terms, expanded consolidation options? Again, more options around how those um, multiple documents get pulled together into a single document. In this case, I'm gonna say no consolidation at all. One sales quotation generates a corresponding sales order. Then I'll say next. I can specify which customers I want. Uh, in this case, I'll say add customers and I wanna add all of my customers. And then I'll say next. What do I wanna do if something occurs during the process, if there's missing data, if there's a bookkeeping adjustment, something that needs to be fixed from a uh, an accounting perspective, or I've got an inventory shortage or whatever the case may be, I can specify exactly what I want to happen. Skip to the next document, skip to the next customer, or ask the user to provide input. Why might I wanna have those different choices? Well, let's say for example, the person who's generating all these documents, they might not have the authorization inside the organization to be able to make decisions about how those documents should be changed if there's an inventory shortage or whatever the case may be. So again, that's the beauty of the parameter sets. You can set up all these different parameter sets and have different people using different parameter sets to generate the, uh, the documents. And then I'll say next. I give it a set name so I can save the parameter set and execute it. I could just go ahead and execute it now and not save the parameter set, or I can save the parameter set and exit, which is what I'm going to do. So that's now done. I've now got my parameter set there. So next time I wanna do my document generation, all I do is go to the document generation wizard. I now pick this existing parameter set. I say next. It will allow me to change any of those parameters if I want. And then when I'm finished, all I do is I execute the parameter set. 
and away it goes. It now does all of that document generation on mass for me. So that is another way that you can go through and you can generate those documents. Very, very handy if you operate in batch processing mode, if you process large numbers of documents. So you've done the sales order, but maybe there might be a situation where a customer needs to send some product back. Well, there's a couple of different ways that you can do that in SAP Business One, and it depends really where the process is, is at. So let's say, for example, you do your shipments and then you send an invoice separately to the goods. If that was the case, and you hadn't yet sent the invoice out, so you hadn't yet turned it into an invoice, you could just dive straight into the return process and you could create a return from the delivery. In order to do that, you would just simply go here into returns, you would pick your customer, let's say in this case, Earthshaker, and you would choose copy from deliveries. So you would call up an existing delivery that was in the system, okay, and then you would process the return from that. If by chance you've already turned that into an invoice, then what you might want to do is you might want to do an AR credit memo, in which case you call up that function here, AR credit memo, pick my customer, again it's Earthshaker, and I'll say copy from AR invoices, and you'll then see, I'm just going to sort this by date, so there is the one that I just did, you can now select that document and it will pull all of that in. So now what it's asking me here is it's saying, okay, do you wanna use the current exchange rate or do you wanna use the exchange rate that was utilized at the time of creating that document? So again, total flexibility. Do I wanna pull all the data in that was on the original transaction, including freight and withholding tax, or do I wanna customize it? Maybe they're only returning one aspect or maybe I need to give them a credit on the freight or whatever the case may be. In this particular instance, I'm gonna draw all the data in and there you have it. There is the information that was originally on that, uh, that sales invoice. So now to process the return, all I do is I click on add and now it's gonna process return, it's gonna bring the stock back in it's gonna create the adjusting general ledger entries, and that's it, I'm now done, I've processed the return. So I can do it that way, or I'm able to, uh, as I said, go in and just process the return against the delivery. Now the great thing about SAP Business One is that we have this functionality called draft documents. Let's say in your organization you have a process which is to uh, require customers to quote a return number, but you don't want to process anything until that return comes in. So what you can do is you're able to choose the customer, again go in here and say copy from deliveries, pick the transaction, so let's pick this one, I want to draw all my data, and then what I'm able to do is I'm gonna give them this document number. So I'll say your return authorization number is return authorization number 16. Then rather than having all the transactions commit, I now wanna wait for that, um, those goods to come back. So I'll say save as draft. So now that document is there as a draft. I can call it back up when the goods come in and continue then the process. So call up that draft document, and then once the goods have come back in and I've checked it, I can commit the accounting transaction. So again, flexibility right throughout the entire system, and that draft capability is there for all of the other transactions I just showed you as well. You can create a draft sales order, a draft invoice, a draft delivery note. You've got total flexibility around that. Other things that you can do as well is create down payment invoices. So you can create kind of like a pro forma invoice for processing a down payment where only certain aspects of the transaction are committed. You can even process an accounts receivable invoice and take the payment at exactly the same time. So if you've got maybe over the counter sales where people will just come in 
and they say, look, I just want to buy this product. You don't need to track who they are. Even if you do want to track who they are, you can handle it. But in this particular instance, you'll see that when I go into the AR um, payment invoice and payment, by default, it uses our one-time customer. And again, I can choose a different customer if I want to. So again, let's say it was Earthshaker that came in and they just wanted to do a quick transaction. I can process it this way. Of course, this is an accounts receivable invoice plus payment. So I probably wouldn't do it for Earthshaker because they've got credit terms with me. But let's say I had customers that I wanted to track the sales per customer, but they were on COD, then I could also use this process. Again, I know I keep harping on about it, but flexibility is the key here. We're not making any decisions for you or telling you how to run your business. We're pre-configuring with best practice, but giving you the ability to choose which way you process your transactions. So I'm not gonna save those changes there to that document. So that takes you through the sales order process, the process of creating your quotations, going right through to the invoice, even processing a return if you need to. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, well, hang on, in my business, I don't actually sell products, I sell services. Well, the good thing is everything that I've just shown you with the entire sales order process going from sales quotation right through to the sales order, the delivery and the invoice, you can do with service-based items. So I'm not gonna take you right through the entire process again just to show you the service capability. What I'll do is let's just dive back in and I'm gonna create a sales order now, except this time rather than it being item-based, I'm gonna make it service-based. So again, we'll pick Earthshaker Corporation. The same things apply uh, in terms of putting in customer reference numbers, putting in your posting dates and your document dates. What's different when you're working with service-based invoicing is instead of your item or service type here being item, all you do is you choose service. And then it's simply a matter of typing in a description of the service that you're, that you're uh, supplying. So in this case, I might say installation of printers on site. All I then do is I pick the general ledger account number that I want to have the sales allocated to. I just scroll through and there's my sales revenues domestic. So I'm gonna pick that account. And then I put in the total amount that I'm gonna charge. And in this case, maybe it's $250. And that's it. Then I choose add and we're ready to go. So the next thing I might wanna do is I might wanna take that sales order and I might wanna turn that into an invoice. Again, simply, I just find the sales order, there it is, the last one I did, and I choose copy to, accounts receivable invoice, there it is, all the information's ready, I click add, it's processed, and that's now done. All that was different between the entire process of item-based invoicing and order processing to service-based invoicing and processing was I just chose to know an item or service type here. Now, the other great thing about SAP Business One is that you can mix and match the different uh, line types. So, for example, you can have some lines in your order which are items, but then you can also create codes. So these are like non-inventory items. You can create a stock code for the different services that you provide and then put your items and your service-based items all on the same invoice. When we look at inventory in our inventory demonstration, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. If you've got any questions, you can click the ask a question button down the bottom of the screen and we'll be happy to come back to you and answer any of those questions which you may have.